Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's Mike. I'm here on the fifth day of the second week of the 40 Days to Personal Revolution series that I'm doing on the channel right now. We are gonna do a 30 minute deep flow today. So again, like I did last Saturday, slowing down the practice a little bit, still able to experience vitality, step out of your comfort zone and really commit to growth in your yoga practice by slowing down sometimes and experiencing longer holds and some moments in stillness, all right? So if you are one of those Baptiste yoga practitioners out there, this is gonna be out of your comfort zone. You're one like me, I'm sure that you like the tapas, the fire, the fast movement. And I'm just gonna challenge you today to really commit to the growth in your practice and experience some of these poses for a little bit longer holds, maybe like modifying down a little bit, taking it a little bit more ease in your practice and just being okay with that for today, all right? And see where it takes you. So we're gonna move into child's pose to start. Take your knees nice and wide. Sit back onto your heels. And start to connect with your breath. Nice deep breaths. For this next 30 minutes, just catching yourself if you start to wander in your mind. So start to like play into that story of it needing to be more, more intensity, more fire, more speed, less stillness. What might be possible for you in the practice if you just slow it down? Be in the moments of breath. Experiencing vitality in your body through that experience of your breathing. And the experience of your physical body being in poses a little bit longer. Five more breaths here. Working to be at your edge. So it's not about doing no work in these poses. It's not like they're easy necessarily. And in fact, like I said, for some of you, longer holds, being still for longer might actually be way out of your comfort zone. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. One more inhale. Tabletop. We'll move through a few cat cows here to wake up the spine on your next inhale. Take cow pose. Look up. Pull your chest forward through your arms. Tailbone points up, and as you exhale, press the floor. Really round your back. Tuck your chin. Belly in. Cow on the breath in. Tailbone up. Look up. Then cat, press the floor. Draw the belly in as you scoop your tail down. For three. Nice lengthy breaths. Cat. Two. One more inhale, look up, let your belly drop down, and then press, really draw the belly button to the spine, tailbone down, neutral spine, tabletop, downward facing dog. Spread out your fingers and toes. Set up the physical foundation here. Ground through hands and feet. Soften into the joints, so your knees, your elbows, they're not rigid, there's a softening. Breathe in. Let your chest melt closer to the floor, lifting through the upper arm bones. And breathing here. Inner ankles back ankles down, root the feet, press the tailbone back, more stretch. If you need to soften your knees a little bit, then just allow that today. Take a breath in, take 
the breath out. If you want to pedal out your dog here, walking out your dog by bending one knee and the other. Do that for a couple more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath in. As you breathe out, press your heels down. Come up onto your toes. Bend your knees, look between your hands, step between your hands, halfway lift, pull the pit of your belly in, fold, chest to thighs, do that one more time, halfway lift, pull the shoulder blades back, lengthen your spine, and fold, empty out. Extended mountain pose. Press your feet down. Reach your arms up. It's like a crescent moon here. Grab onto your left. Sorry, use your left hand to grab your right wrist and then pull up and over. So you get a right side body stretch. Hips to the right, hands to the left. Breathe in. Draw the right shoulder blade back, like gently twisting the chest up towards the ceiling. Check that your knees aren't locked out. That might be your default there. Breathe in, stretch the right side body. Exhale through center, switch hands, grab your left wrist with your right hand, go up and over. Just gently pressing the hips over to the left side. Breath in. Draw that left shoulder back. Full inhale. Full exhale. One more big stretch. Come to center. Inhale, both arms up, spark your fingers. Fold forward, chest to thighs. Halfway lift. Plant your hands, step back to high plank. Come down onto your knees, yeah? Do that, even if you don't have to do that, okay? Like, just see what happens. Lower down, chest, and then cobra pose. Keep your thighs on the mat, shoulders back. Child's pose, knees wide, sit onto your heels. Tabletop, moving with breath. Downward facing dog, hips back. Just modifying the practice a little bit, right? Slowing it down, being a little more gentle. Just as focused with your breath. Just as dialed into your physical body without there needing to be so much fire, so much heat. I love the fire and the heat, don't you get me wrong, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But there's something about taking the practice in a different speed, being in a little bit more in your stillness. This is far from a yin practice, but there's always space for that balance of yin and yang, right? Finding a little bit more time at your edge. Really experience the sensations as you hold. Breathe out, inhale under your toes, bend your knees, step to the top of your mat, halfway lift, fold, extended mountain sweep up, stay for the breath out, spark your fingers, reach up, start to go back a little bit, engage your core muscles, supporting the back bend, one more, inhale, lengthen the upper body, Fold, chest to thighs, halfway lift, high to low, push up with your knees on the mat, cobra pose, lift your chest forward through the window of your arms, child's pose, tabletop. Downward facing dog, hips back. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Again, inhale. And exhale.
lift onto your toes, bend your knees, empty out, step to the top of your mat, halfway left, fold forward, extended mountain reach up, stay for the breath out, keep going up and back, empty out, fold forward. Flat back, high to low, push up, knees on the mat, upward facing dog, cobra, child's pose, tabletop, downward facing dog. Just checking in, if the pace is making you feel crazy, Fascinating, right? Just coming out of your comfort zone. That just means you're doing something that's different. Maybe not exactly what you want. It's not always like, you don't always have to get what you want. If you like, and you don't have to keep doing this practice with me, but there's something in the curiosity. What makes it so resistant to slowing down for a day? Maybe you love the pace. Amazing. You can add a little bit more work if that takes you out of your comfort zone. It's just really being curious about that. Why does it always have to be more, harder, better, further? Who are you proving it to? Just feeling the vitality of your body in stillness. Feeling the strength of your body without needing to fly through the practice. Come up onto your toes. Bend your knees, step to the top of your mat, halfway left, fold. Thunderbolt, take the pose a little less deep than usual. Yeah, so Thunderbolt and chair, they're the same pose, Utkatasana. Really it's how deep you go is not necessarily what creates all the fire. Like you can be in a less deep seat, still really pressing through the feet, feel your glutes wake up, Lift the front of your pelvis. And sit down a bit to get to that place where there's work happening, but there's not like too much intensity. And instead of that, just take another five breaths right here. Really focused on your gaze, the sound, the quality of your breath. Generating the vitality from there. Inhale. Exhale. Full breath. Deep breath. Lengthen. Hold. One more big reach up. Plant your hands. Lift your hips. Halfway lift. High to low plank. Lift the knees on your mat. Cobra, chest forward, shoulders back, child's pose, tabletop, and downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, warrior one. Reach up. Plug that right femur bone into your hip socket. Pull the right hip back. Lunge as deep as you need to go. And again, maybe playing with not going as deep as you can, as you usually do. Right? Sometimes being out of your comfort zone, it doesn't mean going past, doing more than you usually do. What about doing a little less? If that makes you uncomfortable, then that's the work in this moment. Growth from that place of ease, space. Breathe in. Breathe out. Press into the four corners of both feet. Feel your legs active. Hold the pose right here. Fullest breath in. Reach up. Warrior two. Open up. See where you need to land in a stance. If you want to take it a little longer, do that. Keeping that knee tracking in line with your front ankle, okay? Not caving into the center. 
of your mat. Sink down as deep as you need to be. Breathe in. Soften your shoulders a lot. Yeah, like let them melt down. Plug in. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again. Flip and reverse. Feel a big side body stretch. Peaceful warrior. Yeah, you can have your hand behind your back or plant your hand to your back leg, the left hand. Reaching with those right fingers. Big side body stretch. Pull that right shoulder back. Reach the fingers a little bit further. Take a big breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Straighten the front leg. Come forward with your right fingertips and then right palm onto your shin is the option, left arm up. If you have a prop, you can grab onto that. Just really looking to create space in the right side of your body, okay? So just because you can get your fingers to the ground, I can do that too, right? It's not about just because you can. What is possible here from a different place where you lift up and start to really focus on the twisting, the opening across the chest. Really, without needing to look at your feet, feel that grounding sensation through the four corners of the feet. Breath in, breath out. Soften your joints, make sure they're not locked out. Twist a little further. Big stretch. See your top hand. One more big breath in. Look down, plant your hands. Chaturanga Dandasana on your knees. Yeah, lower down. Cobra, chest forward, child's pose, and tabletop, downward facing dog, left foot, warrior one, hold it. That left hip might drop forward, pull it back, okay? Squaring the hips to the top of your mat. If your foot's rolling out, make sure that big toe mound is pushing down into your mat, inner ankle drawing back. Lunge as deep as you need to. Feeling the edge of the pose, and just breathing into it. Where are your thoughts? back here. Lengthen. Integrate the shoulders, arm bones back. Press your feet. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more. Inhale. Warrior two. Sink into the lunge. Vitality in your breath. Focused. Dialed in right here. Full breath in. Press through your feet. Spark your fingers. Inhale. Hold for the exhale. Flip your front palm, reverse. Peaceful warrior. Open up the left side body. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good stretch. Open up that big side body stretch. One more full inhale. Stay for the exhale. Warrior two. Lunge. Triangle pose, straighten the front leg, reach forward, come down, big breath in, big breath out, reach up, and twist open, three, soften the knees, full inhale. Full exhale, one more big reach up, plant your hands on your mat, step back, isolate push up with the knees down, 
Cobra pose, chest goes forward, child's pose. Tabletop, downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Take rag doll. Feet hip distance apart. Grab your opposite elbows, your biceps, and just let the upper body go. Dangling pose, what they call this in yin, and really embody that here. Feel the upper body just totally letting go of any tension, the weight of the head pulling down, lengthening the neck, your spine. Lift the legs a bit, press the feet, shift your hips forward just a little bit, hips over the ankles as best you can, working the legs but letting go of that upper body. If you want to sway, do that. in, take a breath out, one more inhale, see if you can fold a bit deeper now, take a couple more breaths, really in the release of the pose, surrendering to stillness, Holding, breathing. Long inhale, long exhale. Take your hands to your mat, walk them out like part way into a short down dog and then just come down onto your knees. Setting up for one camel pose, and we'll hold it for 10 breaths, okay? So hands onto your low back, lift up the center of your chest. Draw your elbows, your shoulders back towards the center line of your body, back towards your spine. And keeping the hips over your knees. Option if you wanna go back for your ankles, to take it a bit deeper, do that. But wherever you are, find opening through your chest and your throat. So like letting the head fall back. And if you need to tuck the chin to keep the neck supported, you wanna just make sure you can still talk, breathe, maybe not talk, but like breathe fully, swallow easily. And if you have that openness, you can let the head fall all the way back. Keep the hips stacked over the knees, just gently pressing the hips forward, core supporting the back bend. Breathe and hold. Five more full breaths. Out, see if you can stay and breathe. In, out, two more. Big breath in, big breath out. Slowly bring yourself back up, bend your hands, cross your ankles and come down onto your bum. And we'll move into easy bow for a few breaths here, okay? So taking the supported bow, hands behind your thighs, lift your shins parallel to the floor. Just today, hold on to your legs, yeah? And wake up the feet, flex the toes back towards your face. Think about keeping those shins parallel to the floor and finding balance here. Shoulder integration, core integration, and breath. Do five more. Invite 
vitality without the need for it to always be fiery. breath, giving you life, every cell of your body in the pose working for you, big breath in, big breath out, one more breath right here, and release your feet down. We'll move into sitting split pose, okay, so you're going to take your legs wide, as wide as you need to, to feel this, okay? Don't strain your groin. You don't want to like pull anything, right? But just getting them wide enough. Toes face up towards the ceiling and then starting on your palms out in front of you, okay? So working here with a, with a straight spine, instead of like rounding forward, you know, shoulders rolling forward, keep the integration of the shoulders, the chest, the sternum lifting up and forward a little bit. And then we're gonna be here for a little while, okay? For like maybe 10, 12 breaths, something around there, and the option for you to stay in this seated split like this, sitting up nice and tall, might be perfect. You can close your eyes, you can just breathe right here and feel that in your legs. And if you want to deepen it, if you want to get to that edge in the bowing seated split, you can start to take your hands out in front of you, or I like to take them out to the side. This is the way that it's um, Baron's demo aid in the book, is letting the hands slide out to the side starting to bring the chest down towards the floor. And don't go too fast, right? So I know for me, this is a pose that definitely evolves with each breath. And your muscles, your tendons, that happens, right? They feel the stretch, you breathe into it, and then maybe more space is generated on the next exhale. So seeing what's possible, where you can go. Breathe in. your hamstrings or inner groin are screaming at you, take a little bend in the knees, bring your feet a little bit closer together. And if you can stay through the discomfort, if you can breathe through it, that vitality that's in your body, that's committed to growth, right? Being able to stay through the discomfort, the moment you want to come out of the pose, right? That old, you know, saying in yoga that when you want to come out, that's when the work actually begins. Different than like coming out because you might cause an injury or you're in pain or suffering, then you modify in those moments. But just like a discomfort in the body, where can you actually go? How long can you stay? Supported by breath. Committed to growth. Even if it's not always comfortable. Five more. Breathe in, breathe out, slowly, here in the bowing, seated split, slowly come up, bring your hands closer together, gradually coming out of it, don't rush out of a pose like that, don't rush in your yoga practice, bring your feet together, I'm going to turn, take a seated forward bow, don't rush that, right, your inner thighs, your groin, you're going to be feeling that variation you just did. So getting the sit bones back, the tailbone back, and then fold over your legs, seated forward bend, tuck the chin, lengthen the spine, breathe in, breathe out. One more here, long neck, feel that, tuck your chin, head, crown of the head towards the toes, Come up to sit, and then onto your back. Move into dead bug. Grab the outsides of your feet, pull down on your feet. Draw your knees towards your armpits. 
much of your spine on the floor as you can get, okay? So avoiding that lifting through the spine, feel every vertebrate roll down, right down through your lumbar to your tailbone. And if you want to sway, right, do that. And maybe, I'm just gonna take it in stillness. It's your practice, Yogi, you do you. You can close your eyes and just bring the focus internally on the areas of the body that might be still feeling a bit of resistance breath. Resistance is vitality, those sensations, the tightness, all of that is your body speaking to you. Work with it. Learn to breathe through it. Full breath in. Deepen that stretch just a little bit. Bring your knees together. Give them a little squeeze. Extend the left leg long. Right knee into your chest. And then draw that right knee across your body. Supine twist. Keep your right shoulder on the ground. Gaze to the right. Breath by breath, guiding that twist as deep as you need to go. Long breath. Exhale it out. Come back to center. Straighten the right leg. Bend the left knee and then just shift your hips to the left. Inch or two. Left knee in. Pull it in. Supine twist. Throw it across your body. Give yourself some guidance there with that right hand. Breathe. And twist. Three breaths in. Out. Space in your lower back, space in your side body. Long inhale, long exhale. Come back to center. Draw both knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Release, Shavasana, close the eyes. Arms open, palms face the ceiling. Just allow yourself to really do the work of this pose. Over my years of teaching yoga, I've had so many students that are like the Shavasana runners, they'll like leave the class early, they'll maybe on you on YouTube, I wouldn't even know if you're doing it here, but like turning off the video, getting up, and just like going on with your day. This is a pose. Really committing to growth in your yoga practice. One of my biggest areas of growth has definitely been Shavasana, where it's like sitting in it, being still, letting time pass without fidgeting, without wondering how long it's going to be for, thinking it's a waste of time. Lying still and not doing anything for a moment is out of your comfort zone, then just guess what? There's growth possible there for you. Growth and stillness, growth and experiencing ease, not just physically, but mentally. Just breathe.
simple work of this pose of just coming back. Your mind wanders, your body fidgets. If that happens, amazing, acknowledge it. And then come back to the form of the pose, the stillness. Deep rest. Full breath in. Open your mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Arms over your head, a big reach, a big stretch. And roll to one side. With your eyes still closed, slowly bring yourself up to a seated position, sitting tall. Hands at the center of your chest. Take a deep breath in. Empty that out. <sighs> Bring your thumbs to your forehead center. And finish the practice together with a bow. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Comment below. Let me know if you're in this program or if you don't know what the program is, comment and let me know. I can share with you some of the information. Look up the book, 40 Days to Personal Revolution. Or if you were just flowing with me and getting on your mat more often because of the sequence that I'm doing, these, this challenge, um, amazing, okay? I don't even like it to be a challenge. Like It's just like a series of getting yourself onto your yoga mat more often. I filmed this for the second time today. I actually filmed this whole thing this morning. It was amazing. I was like, you know, so dialed into this practice and I filmed the whole thing in time lapse. So it's only 38 seconds long. So I, you know, waited a little while and came back to it and just went with the flow again and just allowed it to land in my body for a second time. And it feels good to me. So I really do appreciate your feedback. Let me know if you are one of those power yogis out there that likes the speed and the fire and you made it all the way to the end and you're still listening to me. I acknowledge you for that. And if this is just kind of your jam, I'm glad that you enjoyed. Please keep moving your body, keep nourishing your body, stay connected to a daily movement practice. Come back soon. Have an awesome rest of your day snoring all the time through the whole class too amazing